Hey, welcome back again. We are going to tackle a very, very easy, great little Halloween decoration today that you can paint in a matter of minutes. I'm gonna show you step by step how to get a little painting like this done for yourself. You need very few supplies to complete this little painting. I'm gonna be using a pencil. Today I'm gonna be using an ebony pencil. You can just use a normal pencil, uh, doesn't matter there. I'm gonna be using a small pointed brush to paint in the black. I'm gonna be using two large squared off brushes uh, to be painting the orange and the red that's coming. Uh, and then I have a little palette with those paints. And then as far as the paper goes, uh, you wanna have a nice strong kind of paper, like a cardstock paper, a uh, nice strong painting paper to deal with. I've got mine cut to a size of eight by eight. Uh, but truly you could use any size that you wanted to. Now, for this, uh, for your jack-o'-lantern, we're going to be drawing the jack-o'-lantern face in first. You could do something like a scary motif like this one, or you could do something cutesy like this one. Uh, what I might recommend is that you look one up. Go to Google Images, type in the word jack-o'-lantern, and see what's out there. Or check out these examples. These are all examples that my students looked up when they did their Google Image searches and see how cool these are. Uh, and feel free to pause the video and draw directly from one of my students' examples if you wanted to. Um, I'm going to draw kind of the scary motif here. Now this is a different style of painting, so I'm going to be using this style of painting, but this style of jack-o'-lantern face. Uh, so here we go. Uh, first I'm going to try to find about the middle of the paper, and on either side I'm going to be drawing in a kind of a leaf-like shape to make the eye. Then I'm going to go to the other side and do the same thing. I'm going to be drawing kind of a leaf-like shape to make the eye. Uh, you want the eyes to be approximately the same size, but it uh, doesn't matter too much. Now, for the mouth itself, this one has lots and lots of jagged pieces. So I'm going to start off with a V in the middle. Then I'm going to let that go down and back up and down and back up and down and back up. And we kind of want this to go up towards where the eyes are and then back down. So it's going to look kind of like a uh, creepy kind of smile that's happening here. All right, so we've got the one side is done. I'm gonna go around to the other side and do the same thing. So down and back up, down and back up. And, and I'm gonna let it kind of curve up this way as we go, uh, all the way up to the eyes and then back down again. So we use this kind of movement going the whole way through and there we've got it completed. All right, so now the next move is we're gonna paint this thing in. I'm gonna drop a little newspaper underneath here so that I don't make my table a mess. Um, but yeah, we're just gonna grab a really large brush and we're gonna paint the entire thing in orange. Now, you technically could have painted uh, first and then drawn, but what I want you to notice is you can see all of your lines right through the paint. Now, I'm painting with a tempera paint, but this would also work very well with acrylic paints. You could do this on a canvas as well. I'm just painting on normal paper. I want you to notice too that my brush strokes are all kind of going up and down, up and down, which is kind of the motif or the style that we want to work with for this um, because it is a pumpkin that we're dealing with. So we want up and down brush strokes. The brush strokes do kind of matter. Uh, if you painted side to side, it would still work, it would still look good, but it would not look as good as when we put these in up and down, up and down, up and down. And there we go, I've got my orange done. Okay, so now, while that orange is wet, I'm gonna grab my smaller brush and I'm gonna paint in some red. Now, I'm not gonna take a ton of red paint. Uh, I am gonna start this right in the middle. So right in the middle and I'm gonna go right up and down with red paint and we're gonna give it a little bit of a curve on this side and a little bit of a curve on that side, just like so. Okay, nothing too fancy. We just kinda want a, uh, a reddish orange. Now, again, taking just a little bit of paint, notice I'm just putting it on the very, very tip of the brush here. That's it. Now, over on this side, I'm gonna let it curve like this, okay? And then we're gonna go back and forth through that a few times, let it kind of mix in with the orange that's there, and then we're gonna do the same thing on the other side over here. So, a little curve out this way, and then just let that kind of mix in. Uh, we're just trying to show a little bit of the visual texture of the pumpkin itself. 
and there we go. We've got that done. The wet and wet mixing that we do with the orange and the red is important because what it does is it represents the visual texture of a pumpkin. So it gives us these sort of ridges. The red is supposed to represent sort of shading in these little ridges on the pumpkin. Um, but don't worry about it too much if yours doesn't turn out perfectly because keep in mind, no one's gonna really look at that layer much once you have your pumpkin face painted in. That's what people really focus on. So now the final step in this, um, you could wait for this to dry but since we're dealing with just black paint on the next step, I'm gonna dive right in and get to work on this. Uh, but we just wanna paint in the black now. Uh, very carefully, we're gonna go through, and what I like to do for this, whenever I'm doing this kind of detail work, is I like to work on the edges first, define all of the edges of my uh, shapes that I wanna put in black, and then the inside is very, very easy to fill in. You can notice it's mixing a little bit with the red and orange that's down there because it's wet, and again, you could wait. You could very easily just wait to get that done. Um, I'm not gonna wait, though. Uh, I just want to dive right in and get this thing painted. What you notice is that the black kind of eats up the other colors. Um, so it's not a problem. You don't have to wait. You can get right into the black and just get it done. And if it mixes in, that's also not a problem. It might look like our jack-o'-lantern is glowing, like there's a little candle inside that's glowing. Um, otherwise, you can just paint black over and over again to get it that nice dark black that you want. Once you get your edges done, then you just kind of fill in the insides. And then we're gonna get down for the mouth as well. Now dealing with the mouth, uh, I'm just gonna recommend that you start at the points and then move down. Start at the points and then move down. Um, it's much easier to paint in that direction to get these things done. It's a lot harder to go the other way and paint out towards the points. So start at the point and paint down. Start at the point and paint down. It helps you get those edges done really nicely. But I'm just gonna go through and again, do the complete outline all the way around, just like we had talked about for the eyes. I'm gonna do the complete outline and then just fill it all in with black. If you have any sections of this that are done really, really tiny, then you might need a smaller brush than what I'm dealing with right now. Otherwise, you just want to be careful about how you press in um, to make sure that you get all of that detail that you really want out of this. As you go through, you want to kind of be careful to stay with your lines, but don't worry about it if some of the lines change, no problem. You drew it, maybe it was perfect, maybe it wasn't, um, but your painting of it, it might look a little bit different. Once you get your line work done though, then all you gotta do is just take that black and go ahead and fill in the entire part, make it all go black. Now you could also choose to do other things with this. You could add uh, other details. You could make it look like it's glowing from within a little bit more than what we're doing here. You could add some white highlights, might look really fun. So there's tons of other details that you can add to this if you wanted to, uh, anything that you could imagine. Go ahead and add those for yourself and make this painting truly unique. All right, I hope that you enjoyed this one. I hope that you had a little bit of fun with it. Maybe you made yourself a cutesy one. Maybe you made yourself a sort of scary one today. Either way, I hope you had some fun with me. Thanks for joining me again today, and I'll see you next time.